James Garner was one of the coolest guys ever to be featured on the big and small screens. On TV, he played iconic characters like the witty card player Maverick and the beach-dwelling Pontiac Firebird-driving sleuth Jim Rockford. At the movies, he appeared in more than 50 theatrical films, including The Great Escape, The Wheeler Dealers, and Support Your Local Sheriff. Sadly, injuries he sustained throughout his acting career, coupled with a stroke he had later on in life, drastically impeded Garner's ability to continue working towards the mid to late 20th century. Join Facts First as we address how James Garner was never quite the same after suffering a string of injuries. Critically acclaimed for good reason. Born the spring of 1928, James was an actor and producer whose career spanned more than half a century. He scored his first role in showbiz in the mid-1950s in the TV western series Cheyenne. He went on to appear in many more TV series and films, including Sayonara, Conflict, and Maverick, the latter of which saw him portraying the central character, Brett Maverick. Decades later, in 1981, another series titled Brett Maverick ran for a single year. That show saw Garner reprise his role from the first Maverick series and resulted in him being nominated for a Primetime Emmy as well as a Golden Globe. Garner became a household name after appearing in Maverick in the 60s. Because of this, he went on to continue landing significant roles in television programs like Nichols and later The Rockford Files. It was all thanks to his stellar performance in The Rockford Files as Jim Rockford that he received three Golden Globe nods and an additional five Primetime Emmy Award nominations. In 1977, he won one of those Emmys. The only time Garner was nominated for an Academy Award was in 1986, after portraying Murphy Jones in Murphy's Romance. That offering saw him share the screen with Sally Field. James's Romance with Lois Clark On August 17, 1956, James married the love of his life, Lois Clark, just two weeks after meeting her. Garner later said when he first saw Clark, it was love at first sight. The two shared that first chance encounter at the Adlai Stevenson for President rally, which was held on August 1, 1956. Clark later told the press that Garner shed a tear when she accepted his marriage proposal. After walking down the aisle, James became the stepfather of Kimberly Garner, Lois's daughter from a previous union. Two years after they got married, Clark gave birth to a daughter whom they named Greta Gigi Garner in 1958. Gigi later spoke highly of her father, whom she described as a good guy, who used to do everything within his power to stay connected with her, regardless of where he was in the world or how busy he was with his demanding career. Gigi also added all her friends adored her dad, not only because he was a big famous movie star, but also because he was remarkably funny. This video is brought to you by Established Titles. Have you ever been interested in being a lord or a lady? With established titles, now you can become one. For real. You could officially change your name to Lord or Lady and get it on your credit card, plane tickets, etc. You can even get it on your dating profiles. You can purchase title packs that give you at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland. With the purchase, you'll receive an official certificate with a crest. Your certificate features a unique plot number with which you can see the exact location of your land. Established Titles told me that the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot within a few minutes of walking. Depending on how many of you want to become a lord or a lady, we can build our little Facts First kingdom. They plant a tree with every order and work with global charities, One Tree Planted, and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation efforts. It makes an amazing last-minute gift. Established Titles is actually running an early Black Friday sale, plus if you use the code FV10, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash FV10 to get your gifts now and help support the channel. Injuries and health problems nearly derailed his career. While Garner will always be remembered as a loving family man, his numerous surgeries made his life quite challenging. Since James insisted on doing his own stunt work, he ended up suffering many back and knee injuries that eventually forced him to quit. Garner once even admitted that during every hiatus he would take from acting, and for a total of five years in a row, he had to have knee operations. But it wasn't just his back and knees that required surgery. In 1988, Garner had to go under the knife to clear an obstruction restricting blood flow to his heart. Then, in 2008, he had to go onto the operating table once again after suffering a minor stroke. 
The Rockford Files caused Garner constant pain and suffering. Six seasons of playing Jim Rockford on the Rockford Files took a serious toll on his health. Garner was always insistent on doing his own stunt work, despite the fact that the studio would gladly have hired a professional stunt double. Garner revealed that once he had sustained one injury, it was basically all downhill from there. Not only did a series of injuries have a serious impact on his acting career during this chapter of his life, but he also complained of having a persistent sinus infection that lingered with him for the better part of four years. This evidently was the result of an injury that caused bone to grow over one of his sinuses. Even medication wasn't enough to alleviate his symptoms. In the end, he was left with having to contend with a constant low-grade infection. He got into a vicious street fight. In 1981, Garner told Panorama magazine about the time he got into a violent altercation on the streets of LA following a traffic accident. After getting into a collision, the other driver leaped out of the vehicle and began hitting Garner through the window. As the person landed eight or nine blows, Garner got out of his car and grabbed him. In the process, the two fell into the street, with Garner landing on top of his attacker. That's when the other person tried to grab Garner by his groin and squeeze as hard as he could. The attacker then got up and started kicking Garner repeatedly in the head and the rest of his body. At that point, he was laying on his stomach, bleeding, bruised, and about as busted as can be. In the end, Garner had numerous broken bones and one heck of a concussion. Despite having his tail handed to him, Garner told Panorama the guy still wasn't all that tough. He suffered injuries on the Space Cowboys set. Space Cowboys was a film about a bunch of aging astronauts who get lured out of retirement to defuse a dangerous Cold War-era satellite. Garner, alongside Clint Eastwood, Donald Sutherland, and Tommy Lee Jones, played the film's eponymous geriatric spacemen. Jones, who was the youngest cast member at 53 at the time, was once quoted as saying the film's spacesuits were particularly uncomfortable. They were a painful chore to put on and a hassle to take off and maneuver around in. They were so heavy that apparently, at one point, Donald Sutherland accidentally fell backwards and cracked his knee. James Garner, who was 72 during production, likewise took a fall, resulting in him dislocating his shoulder. Both actors pressed on despite their injuries. Reportedly, Clint Eastwood administered first aid on set, tending to Garner's injured shoulder. Back when Clint was filming Thunderbolt and Lightfoot in 1973, he too suffered a chronic shoulder dislocation. Through that experience, he learned how to pop a dislocated bone back into place. While Garner went right back to work and finished up shooting, Eastwood said that it was quite a while before he was back out on the golf links again. Garner reportedly refused to attribute his injury to the feebleness of old age. Instead, he claimed the accident was purely the result of clumsiness. The only time Garner was willing to admit that he and his elderly colleagues weren't aging quite as gracefully as they hoped was the time they filmed a scene that involved all the guys showing off their bare bottoms to the camera. Sutherland was quoted as saying that during that scene's filming, he looked frantically to see if anything could redeem his bare backside, but alas, nothing could. By that point, the effects of time and gravity had done their damage. Sadly, time and advancing age eventually caught up to James Garner. After having his stroke in 2008, James was left in poor health. On July 19, 2014, police and medics were dispatched to his Brentwood, Los Angeles home, where he was found dead at age 86. It was later revealed he had died of a heart attack. He was survived by his wife of nearly 58 years, Lois, as well as his two daughters, Kim and Gigi. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite of James Garner's acting roles? Let us know in the comments section below.